TV. Black Tree. Black TV, yes. I'd like to ask you more about that later. That would be great. Yeah. So what attracted you to this character, Metz? Well, I, you know, I get attracted to a movie, to a script first. And, and I really liked the writing in this. And I thought, uh, I thought it was about something. And about something that interested me, something that kind of had an effect on my own life in the sense that it's about, and on one level, it's about honesty in journalism. And, and then it's about honesty in your own private life and with the people you love. And, that, and, and that's, that's very interesting. And it's emotional and, and it's exciting. Surprising twists in it. And then after that, I think about the character. There was a character that I, I, I would be able to play and in, interested in playing. I always like it a little bit, actually, if, if I don't, if I say to myself, are you really going to be able to do this? You know? Although I, I didn't, I didn't have much of that in this. I knew I could do it. But I love it when I, when I say to myself, how, how are you going to do that? You, are you, you think you really can do that? And then you, then you come up with stuff you didn't know was there. Right. But there was a certain toughness to this character that I really liked. Because he's really rough on that, on that uh, young reporter, isn't he? Definitely. Have you had an, an editor be rough on you like that? Um, not yet, and I, I'm hoping that won't be the case ever. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe so. I mean, maybe, maybe that person will goose you into something you didn't know you had in right. you. Right, that push. Yeah. yeah. Although you, it'd be, be better to do it without being rough, I think. Yeah, I think so, yeah. too. So. Hey, boss. We got a little buried today, huh? What are you talking about? Uh, the Germain fight I covered. It's a, it's a good fight. Oh, yeah, I, I buried it, right. Why? Something's got to get buried. Well, that's what high school wrestling's for, right? I mean, it's a solid story. Not a fact missing. I mean, you'd copy 40 minutes after the fight. Oh, yeah, you. You're like a machine. Well, the style of one, too. Oh, wait a minute, Ralph. This... Do you mind sitting? Now, listen, I appreciate what you're doing, filling my pages. And I don't want you to stop. Hey, Ralph. Sorry for interrupting. Do you want me to email you those quotes? Yeah, yeah, right. But your copy, it's unimpressive. A lot of typing, not much writing. Well, Sam Kirby, like... He doesn't work here anymore. The truth is, I forget your pieces while I'm reading them. Now, if this is the best you can do, I'm not going to complain. But I know you can do a lot better. What's that, Ralph? because of your name. Thanks for talking. Oh, look, come on, look. Don't be, don't get like a chick on me, all right? Be a man. Recognize your weaknesses and fix them. Slow down a bit, you know? Think quality. I got it. Got an appointment. So this film deals with being a legend, and you've been called a TV legend. Um, what do you think makes a legend, like the definition of a legend, in your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, first of all, you, I can't answer that because I try not to be one in my own mind. <laughs> and and uh, I, I, that's really an outside view, you okay. know? So I don't really know. You know, even when MASH was a big hit, right. and I was very proud to be on it, I didn't know how big a hit it was. Because none of us did. We were in the center of the storm, the yeah. eye of the storm, where it's calm, right. it's quiet. All the turbulence is on the outside edges, and everybody says, "Oh my God, here comes a big hurricane." We didn't know we were in a hurricane. We we, we were just doing our work, you know. Right. So anybody who is a legend is really not aware of it, oh, okay. and if they are aware of it, they're probably not a legend. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, speaking of MASH, you know, you were on set and there was a war going on. Um, do you have an opinion about the war in Iraq? I do, but I, I, you know, I talked about politics a lot when I was a younger person. And I, I don't talk about it in public anymore. I have very strong feelings about it. Oh, do you? It. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe we can have you, a, you must, too. <laughs> <laughs> right? We all do. Yeah. I want it to be over. Okay. I, I guess everybody says they want it to be over. But... Um, how to do that, I guess, is the big discussion. I have a shot at the magazine. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it is. That is great. I appreciate what you're doing, but you copy. It's unimpressive. A lot of typing, not much writing. Eric Kernan needed something big to put his life back on track. I forget your pieces while I'm reading. 
I know you can do a lot better. But what he found <gasps> was more than he could have hoped for. Old man, are you okay? It's fun to beat the champ. You see the champ? What are you talking about? Battling Bob Satterfield. Number three in the world. Well, there's this boxer. He's living on the streets. Boom! No, I ain't no boat. I'm just homeless. What's his name? Battling Bob! Satterfield. I'm sure my dad used to idolize that guy. I never dreamed though I'd be heavyweight champ. I always thought that I would win it. You fought the mother. You fought Patterson. <laughs> this article is my title shot. All right, son. You ask your questions. I ask. Nice piece on this guy. Kernan. You are on your way to a Pulitzer, Eric. I Eric Kernan. Cool. You're pretty proud of me. Real proud. So your dad, he ain't perfect. And one day, he's gonna get his shot. This is Eric Kernan. You write that article. Now, the story he just told is nothing compared to the one. I just saw him last night. He's about to live. Are you sure about that? And in this corner, when the lean mean... You know, I did also find this. Where'd you get this? 185 pounds. That's the man you interviewed. You keep a secret, Molly. Can you? From Chicago, Illinois. There's going to be an internal review. We're going to want to talk to your wife. You let me down, and you let everyone else who works on this paper down. A very good man. And a good father. I'm responsible. There's no going back. Well, I hope that the one day, God willing, your son does for you what you just done for me. A writer, like a boxer, must stand alone. The truth is revealed, and there's nowhere to hide.